And Rob Chang is here from PC Matic joining us this morning. Good morning, Rob. Good morning. So we, um, the last time we spoke, I think it was soon after what, the, no music? the new year. Yeah. Well, hold on a second. Yeah, we got, I got all, all excited. Right. Okay. Hold on. All right. Back up. Can we do that again? Sure. Okay. It's 9.05 on the Liz Callaway <laughs> Show. And as promised, we have here Rob Chang of PC Matic. See, that's better. That is better. You're right, Nikki. First you affected my dad's PC. Then you got my wife's. I cleaned up your ugly mess. Now I want you out of my life. No, you don't. How can do our PCs? No, you don't. Get by our security. No. All right, was that better, Rob? I'm happy. <laughs> I knew you would be. I know. I, I that was an oversight. I shame on me. Impeach me. That's that's an impeachable. <laughs> oh offense. no no no. That's impeachable. No, that is no? not high crimes or treason. <laughs> so, I think Rob would think so though. No. But you know, no, what? I don't. No? no. So I was saying the last time we spoke to you um, was right after the new year. We were talking about passwords. It's a good time to change your passwords and everything. But we were talking about uh, ransomware in its original <laughs> state, and that was pretty bad. But now it's getting worse. It it's, is. It is getting worse. And, um, I mean, you brought to my attention that uh, a, a large antivirus maker is getting involved in something and ransomware is uh, changing its course. A couple of days ago, it just came out um, that Avast, which is one of the largest antivirus makers in the world, um, they're coming uh, out of the Czech Republic mm -hmm. and, they, they, and it's free. And what happens is that they go and um, what you're using the free software, they're collecting a lot of personal information and they're selling it. And um, all your browsing habits, um, if you are doing pornograph por pornography and that kind of thing, yeah. they are selling that information. Okay, wait a minute. Um, so a vast, a vast is getting into your computer somehow. Yes, because because you're, you, it's your antivirus, it's mm -hmm. sitting there on your computer. It can see everything you're doing. And and I believe that they are they're trying to protect your computer, but at the same time they're doing that, they're taking a lot of your personal information. Wow. Now, do we know like when you sign up for that type of an antivirus software, do we know that they're doing that? Like, do they have to disclose that? You know, I don't know. This just broke. I mean, we uh, two two days ago. Oh. You know, so I I'm going to guess that um, that they have not disclosed that. I mean, certainly mm -hmm. to the degree that they've been selling it. I mean, I think they're using the same outlets that like Facebook is selling our information stuff to. Um, they're they're so doing like a that. marketing. Yeah, type they're of. marketing it, and then you know, like Home Depot and other places like this have bought the information. Wow. So there's a big story about that. And and for, for all of us who are just out there, I mean, the, 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 the news here is stop mining? using a vest. Yes, that, that's okay. what they're doing. But, but they're doing it I mean, on your personal information without you wanting that personal information yeah. out there. So stop using a vest is stop number one. Stop using a vest. Um, so so that, that is and, – and it's really kind of scary, I mean, because you, you need to trust your antivirus software. So the question then is, well, who should you buy instead? I mean, because – or actually, in a vast case, it's free. So actually, that's another big lesson here is that, I mean, if, hmm. if you're using free antivirus software, there's probably a reason that is free. And if you don't understand what that reason is, that's of a concern. Wow. I mean, a vast – I mean – you know, if they have ads there, well, that might be one way. But now, what they're doing, it seems, is they're taking data off your computer and they're selling it. Okay, so with PCmatic and um, and you know, you are the owner of PCmatic. How does your antivirus software work? So, I mean, ours is just much more straightforward. I mean, we we are, we are ours is not free. People pay us, and then we we protect your computer from viruses getting in uh, into your system. Mm -hmm. I mean, they they say they pro, pro, uh, protect your computer, but then at the same time, since it's not free, I mean, it is free. That that instead they're taking all this information off your computer and they're selling it. And they're selling it. I mean, are is are is a company allowed to to take your information and sell it? Um. I, I don't know. I mean, let, let, this is just breaking news. I mean, so let's see how... Was there a whistleblower how, that... It, it came out in one of the, um, you know, the, the news media over there in the UK. Wow. Okay. And and that, and that is from the UK? 
Uh, no, the, uh, Avast is oh. coming out of the Czech Republic. Oh, Czech Republic. That's what you said. Okay. But it is a lot of um, schools. Mm-hmm. Uh, for a while, it used to be um, free for schools, and then a lot of uh, individuals are using Avast. Hmm. So I, I think this is a here really in big, the United here States. Here in the United States. Wow. Now, have you heard of any um, ransomware cases that involve them? Um, no, I, I don't know anything about, you know, mm-hmm. how good their software is okay. and things, although we do know that, you know, infections are happening all the time. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, this explain what ransomware is and explain now, like we were talking about the coronavirus and how it's mutating and everyone's freaking out about that. Well, ransomware is mutating. Ran- that, that, that is a really good way of looking at it. So what is ransomware? Ransomware is a, a computer virus. It either gets in from, I mean, the best way to think about it is think of an email. looks really authentic, and it says that you have a package or you have a bill. And then you click on the attachment to look at it, mm-hmm. and um, and maybe you'll see a bill. But in the background, then the virus is entered in the com- uh, into your computer. And it's also, if you're doing it at work, it's also entered into your network. Oh, boy. And, um, and and the key thing about antivirus is at that point in time, it's supposed to stop it. Mm-hmm. The problem is more uh, frequently, it, the, the antivirus let it, lets it go through. Once it starts going in, it takes a while, but it starts encrypting all your files. And then once all the files are encrypted and you can no longer get to them anymore, then it demands a ransom to get it back. Mm-hmm. Historically, what's happened, and this is a really big piece of news, but, but um, is historically, then you would go and pay them and then give, they would give you a key and then you could get your files back. If you decide not to pay, and, and the FBI says not to pay. Because um, it just encourages more attacks. It is, and that's what's been going on. It's like on. paying for hostages. Yes. No one ever does that. So the scary Except part, Obama. though, right now, the scary part right now is that not only have they encrypted your files, but they've also stolen your files. And mm-hmm. so they have they have a copy of your files now on um, on, on their uh, web server, and then if you do not pay the ransom, they've been now pushing that information out to the public. So it's not, kind of like a drip thing, and they said you're going to pay now. We're we'll, we're going to release this. We're going to release. You know. Yes. Wow. So yes, now, when now that that's really bad for those big companies because a lot of times these big companies, like the big credit card companies, or like a Target or something like that, big store, they won't. They try and fly under the radar. They try and pay off the ransomware before the media finds out about it and tells everybody that they've been compromised and their information might have gotten out. They try and get ahead of it before anybody gets hit. That's correct. And now it's almost they're they're going to have no choice. You can't not pay it now because now it threatens you even more. It's like it's one thing not to get any of your information back because you may have a backup. But now if you you're threatening to to damage you know other people this is a I think this is a game changer um, so the how I learned about this is that I've been spending a lot of time with the FBI mm-hmm. and the FBI brought to my attention I saw it but then I say well, this when I put two and two together wait this is a game changer because now more and more people will have to go and pay the ransom more more importantly, I think, is that, you know, historically, you were paying them to do something. Give give me the key. Now you're paying them not to do something. Right, right. So therefore, you, it's not hard to imagine that a year from now, they're saying, well, we're going, we still have all your information. You need to pay me again. So now it becomes truly the cyber mafia. So you're, now what? So the, the best thing, again, is protection. I mean, we have to prevent these things from happening. And so the key thing is the antivirus. The antivirus is, is letting these things through. You need an antivirus, which gets everything. And this is mm-hmm. the difference between blacklist and whitelist, which I've talked about on the show already. Yeah. I mean, th- this is well, not just happening to our people. customers. This is not happening to our customers because our, our architecture is different. And, and as, as these problems get more and more severe, I think that we, we have to move to a situation where we're going to block every single virus that comes in, without exception. Okay, so, and the difference between a blacklist and a whitelist is blacklist blocking is blocking things that you already know to be Bad. dangerous. Right. But a whitelist is only allowing in things that you know to be good. Right. Because there are bad things being made every day. All right. day long. The difference between the blacklist and whitelist is, is, you said it really well, but the key distinction is if it sees something it's never seen before, a, a program that they've never seen before, the blacklist assumes it to be good. Mm-hmm. And that's the security hole. And that's hole. what lets it through. That's what's letting it through throughout the entire country now with this stuff. And the whitelist says, if I have not seen it before, 
I'm going to go and assume that it's bad until I can later verify that it's good. And the interesting part of the whole thing is, that, to me, it, it's, it doesn't seem possible that this is not being promoted more, that the fact that we need a whitelist software like PCmatic, that's number one. But the second thing that really is getting me is that it's not being told to people enough. Like, it's not like everywhere that that these foreign made virus antivirus companies are also in many cases could be having a hand in creating the the, the actual viruses that are infecting your computers. And I always had a, that feeling because of the timing of all of it. Well, you let's know? go back to the first thing we just talked about, Avast, right? Avast mm -hmm. is made out of Czech Republic. Most people don't know that. Right. And now we're learning that they're also now taking all this information that you could, you, you need to trust your antivirus software. Now we learn that, no, you can't trust them because they're taking all your information, your browsing habits and all that, and they're selling it. Wow. You know, so, I mean, one, you really have to trust your antivirus you know, and where it's made makes a difference because if they're made in Czech Republic, they, they don't really care as much about you and mm -hmm. your security as it's trying to figure out a way to make money off of you. So when they sell it, it's more for maybe advertising or marketing? Or... Actually, well, their product is free. I mean, that's the difference. But I mean, to they sell it to clients. Right. They're, they're at, they're, they sell your information to other businesses so they, they can use that marketing information? Yes. Although, I mean, I'm not sure. I mean, if somebody has, you know, the fact that you've been on various pornography sites and mm. things like that, I'm not really sure how that helps anybody market. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, more, it's much more uh, a threat to your privacy mm -hmm. and embarrassment. Blackmail? And things, yeah, things like that. It's more um, Especially because factor. they're, you know, in a lot of cases, you know, it might end up on the dark web. And I, we don't even understand what dark web is. Could you explain what dark web is? So, yeah, there, there, there's an area that you go to on the web where nobody knows ever, anybody there. I mean, everyone has this thing called an IP address. And that's a way of us know, them knowing, you know, who um, who's on, uh, on the web there. Uh -huh. There's an area where it's totally anonymous, and it's called the dark web. And how do you get there? Um, actually, you need a special browser to get there. Um, now, what's a browser? A browser is uh, what you use to go through and get to a web page. I mean, that, so like that's it, Edge it's in your Chrome. computer. Yeah, it's okay. A, Edge and Chrome. So there's a special one. It's, I think it's called a Tor browser. Okay. And you can go out there, and then you're totally anonymous. Now, uh, but why because is that you're totally allowed? anonymous, um, then you can do all kinds of things there, and people share information, but you don't know who they are. So you use a browser that doesn't have any fingerprints on it. Correct. And um, and why is that allowed? Like, is that something that was created to circumvent, to do nefarious things? I mean, um, actually, I think it's more a function of the design of the internet itself. I mean, the internet began as, as you know, a free for all. Yeah. Yeah. And and so I think it's just a function of that, you know. And then uh, you know, but. I don't, there, there's always a give and take here. How how much do you want the government, mm -hmm. uh, you know, controlling the internet? I mean, then you end up like China, where they you can't see lots of things, right? You know, and then the, in the United States, you know, we have some, but then there's the area of the dark web, which most citizens, uh, even maybe myself, I'd never go there. I mean, but for example, that's a place that the FBI goes frequently to figure out what's going on. I had never even heard of it until I was watching like some TV show. And it was I like, just don't dark understand web. the concept of it. <laughs> so, uh, so the, I mean, that this is where the um, the ransomware is coming from. It's coming so you can buy the. Um, th it's like a marketplace. You can buy the um, the ransomware there. You can buy where you're going to attack there. I mean, all wow. these things. It's a whole ecosystem, and it can't be shut down by the government. No, no, it's all anonymous. The, 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 since this all started, the ransomware thing, in September 2013, there's not one person that's been fined. There's not one person that's been sent in jail. And now we're at se on seven years. Wow. Do you have an estimate about how many ransomware attacks you think there are? It's hard to know. I mean, I, I think the best way to know is how bad the problem's getting because people are paying the ransoms and it just keeps on getting worse. I mean, this latest development where they, they now have your data and they're, they're mm -hmm. throwing that out there. I mean that. Uh, I mean, it just shows that a lot. Of this problem is getting very bad. That's really crazy. Okay, so um, Rob Chang, we're talking to from PCmatic.com. You have a question, Nick? We on do our have text a text line. Yeah, we do. It's not necessarily about uh, ransomware or virus stuff, but it's just an overall general computer question. I think people trust you because they know you're the smart guy, and I don't know the answer either. <laughs> so, uh, how about this? Let's see. Does he, this individual wants to know, does he, he has Windows 7. Does he have to get an upgrade to 10? 
or can you exist and live on seven? Because they stopped supporting it, obviously. You know, um, we uh, one. I mean, our product continues to support Windows Seven. It's, they're asking the question whether they will be, still be secure if they get a good antivirus that still supports Windows Seven. They still can be secure. I mean, our product still supports Windows XP and Vista, for example. Wow. Oh, wow. Okay. I mean, there are a lot of people that I mean that, that don't have a compelling reason. I mean, the, the computer does everything they want it to do; it's still mm -hmm. running reasonably fast. But then the only reason Microsoft wants you to get off of that is so they can make more money, you know, going mm -hmm. to the new revision. Right. But there's no, you know, necessity by the end user. And so, I mean, there are a lot of people still even on XP, hmm. and businesses on XP. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so we we continue to support those, and you still can stay um, s secure. Okay, so when that warning comes up, do you wish to upgrade? You can just hit ignore. Don't show me this again. Well, you're I usually mean, fine. If you're worried about security, you can be fine. I mean, but there, I mean, they do put a lot of other things in there that you might want. I mean, it, it is uh, they are going putting more security in there. But at the end of the day, if you're trying to protect yourself against ransomware, the key thing is really more about your antivirus mm -hmm. than anything. So if I've got if I've got your product and I've got seven, I'm fine. Yes, yes, that's true. Perfect. All right. And uh, you can find out more about PCmatic by going to PCmatic.com. And Rob, uh, we always enjoy having you on the air with us. And uh, anything else you need to add or we got everything um, that you No, actually, I was going to spend some time talking about passwords. Um, so if I have yes. a few moments here, sure. I mean, I wanted to talk about um, the ins and outs of the passwords. One, um, the, the security hole, the, the, the reason why password is important is really for the place where you work. So if you're retired or everything, this is not quite as important. But if you're still working, one of the key things is do not use the same passwords that you use at home or for your personal stuff at work. Mm -hmm. um, we did some research and shows that 50% of the people who are working are using um, their personal passwords at work. And that creates an enormous um, security hole because the um, your personal passwords, by and large, you should consider that they're compromised because of all the breaches that we learn about. Certainly last year, there was a ton of them. I mean, there's so many breaches mm. is that you should assume that they know your password. So number one is you should pa change your passwords. And number two is um, don't use those passwords um, at your workplace. So when you say don't use those passwords at your workplace, do you um, also mean don't open your private email at work with your personal or when you have websites that require that are work related like my work email don't use the same password okay so what i'm referring to is the latter okay, okay. um is and particularly if you have you know a network access or mm -hmm. something beyond just your uh, your work email that you're using on your computer at right. work uh -huh. you don't want to use um, your personal password for that now that said another thing that is another security hole is people using their work computer Mm -hmm. Not their work phone, uh, phone or something. Using your work computer, and you, reading your personal email. So that too. That 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 also is a risk because all of a sudden you're doing that, and then then the uh, ransomware is coming in through that email. You double click on it, and now it's on your work network. Wow, that is really incredible, and I and I, it may actually end up being in someone's uh, employee handbook. You know, uh, we have an employee handbook. I mean, there is, I mean, for larger organizations, they have cybersecurity training. They go over a lot of this stuff in the cybersecurity trainings. Mm -hmm. But for people that are not, you know, part of larger organizations, the places, I mean, where ransomware is hitting, let's, let's talk about that, is, um, is small businesses like this radio mm -hmm. station, you know, um, and then cities, counties. And um, police departments, and then here's one that uh, we all worry about: K through 12. Right. So if you read uh, read all the news and everything, that's where the ransomware is hitting now. It's also getting going. I mean, it hit what two weeks ago? It hit the Coast Guard. You know. Some, wow. Did it? Yeah, uh, yeah I, it did. I did hear about that. I didn't hear that one. So that's a federal one. So they that, got that, hit with ransomware. They did. Wow. And we know Thailand's health. I mean, so he, that happened here in yeah. Long Beach. So yep. I mean, it's it's everywhere. Wow. All right, Rob Chang from PCmatic.com. Thank you so much for joining us. It's great to be here always. I, I know I'll uh, be seeing you next month. You'll be back on to join us and bring us up to date. Okay. All right. Thanks, Rob. Thanks.